that in Nigeria, about 10.5 million children are not in school. Yet state governments approve millions of Naira yearly for foreign scholarships. The Cape State Government recently allocated 309.5 million Naira for foreign scholarships, benefiting 86 students in India and Egypt. This packed outrage among many netizens questioning how these scholarships benefit the nation, given that many of the sponsored students do not return to their home country to give back. The Executive Secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, Sonny Echono, on July 19, 2023, said that over 137 students sponsored abroad by the government have absconded. He stated this when he appeared before the House of Representatives ad hoc committee investigating the alleged mismanagement of 2.3 trillion Naira tertiary education tax by TED Fund. Echono said the scholars who were sponsored by TED Fund for higher education abroad refused to return to the country after completing their programs. He added, the students who failed to return to Nigeria after completing their studies could be repatriated or forced to pay back government scholarships. Foreign scholarships have been a significant investment by various state governments in Nigeria, with substantial amounts allocated to sponsor students for studies abroad. For instance, Katsina State spent 625 million naira on foreign scholarships between 2018 and 2023. Other state governments that have spent significant amounts on scholarships abroad include Adamawa, Bauchi, Jigawa, Kaduna, Gombe, Zamfara, Niger, Yobe, Benue, Taraba, and Borno. A report by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO stated that of the country's out-of-school children, Bauchi, Kebi, Katsina, Kano, Jigawa, and 10 other states have about 10 million, with Bauchi leading with over 1.2 million out-of-school children. Why then is the government's primary focus on foreign scholarship? Is it not more valuable to invest in upgrading the domestic academic landscape instead? By improving local education, we can create a more sustainable and equitable system that benefits a larger number of students and contributes to economic growth and development. Kankada argues that allowing northerners to travel beyond their familiar environments can benefit them. He insists that international exposure for personal and national development should be encouraged. These scholarships are expected to yield benefits for the country by providing students with exposure to international education systems and fostering the acquisition of valuable skills and knowledge that can contribute to various sectors upon their return. The benefits of these scholarships are significant, no doubt. However, the government faces a crucial decision on whether to continue investing in foreign scholarships or redirect these funds to enhance the domestic academic landscape, especially with the Jabba syndrome in view. What do you think about this? Do you think the government should continue funding foreign scholarships? Or do you advocate for the building and development of the domestic education landscape? You can join the conversation in the comments section. Thank you for watching.